Hey guys, what's up? Producer engineer Alex Scott here with Concertini.com coming at you with another basic recording tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about recording this fabulous instrument, my personal favorite instrument that I've played for years and years, the bass guitar, okay? Now, uh, bass guitar is actually a pretty simple instrument to record if you ask me. There's really two schools of thought about how you can go about recording bass, um, and they even can can blend together. Um, there is There are the guys like myself who DI their bass, and there's guys who record their amp. And then there's a lot of guys who will do both as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but what I'm mainly going to focus on in this video is DI recording. That's how I do it nine times out of ten. Um, it's by far the easiest and simplest to set up. It requires the least equipment, um, and it offers you the most uh, flexibility after the fact, okay? So, again, it's very, very simple. You're going to need very, very few things in order to get started recording your bass direct. All you're really going to need is your cable, okay? You can see I've got just your typical quarter-inch guitar cable, and I've got it running into one of my preamps up here, um, but I will assume for the purposes of this video that you guys have some kind of an interface, okay, that is a box that uh, you plug into your computer that talks to your software to do the actual recording, and almost every, even the really simple, very basic, inexpensive audio interfaces nowadays have what is labeled as a DI or a guitar input, okay, and that will have a, you know, typical quarter inch guitar cable jack on it on the front or maybe on the back of your interface box. And you just plug that in just as you would. You plug the other end into your bass, you turn up your volume knob, and you're pretty much ready to go. You got to set the volume, set the gain, right? We'll talk more about that in a moment as well. Um, but that's really all there is to it. Now, if you find yourself with uh, an interface of some kind that does not have a dedicated DI or guitar uh, like specific jack on it that's labeled as such. You're, the only thing you will need to invest in is something that looks a little bit like this, okay? This is called a DI or direct box, okay? Now, what it does, I'm not going to get too much into the technicality of it because it's a simple device, but it, it basically is, is correcting an impedance mismatch. That's a very complicated phrase, and it represents some complicated electrical concepts. But basically, um, when you have like a microphone plug on your interface, it's expecting the level of sound that's coming from a microphone. And the level of sound that comes out of the pickups on a bass guitar is a little bit different. And this little box, you plug your bass into one end, okay, like so. We've got our uh, in, you can see the little in label there. You plug that in there and then you will plug a microphone cable into the other side. See where that looks kind of like the bottom end of a microphone with the little three pins and then you will plug that microphone cable into your interface. And that's basically just going to ensure that um, your interface box is getting the right level of signal and the right type of signal, electrically speaking, from your bass guitar. Again, kind of complicated and technical, but you don't really need to fully get what it's doing on an electrical level. Just know that it is an important thing to have if your interface does not have a dedicated uh, guitar jack. However, this is getting rarer and rarer. Almost all interfaces these days have dedicated uh, DI jacks, which basically have this built into it, is really all that, all that plug is on your interface box. Um, and so if you have one of those, you're not gonna need to worry about a DI at all. Now, in terms of setting your gain, all you're gonna do is on your interface, you'll have a little knob labeled gain, and it's usually next to that little jack, um, where you know the guitar or DI jack. And you're basically going to get set up in your software, you'll add your track and set your input, all that normal stuff. And then you're gonna turn your bass all the way up, you want your volume all the way full, set your tone or whatever, however you want on your bass guitar itself. And then you're just gonna sit there and play, play hard, okay? Play as hard as you think you're gonna play for the song in question, the song that you're recording. And you're gonna turn that gain knob up until you see that there's a good amount of green, right? We've got our meters in our software, the little green bar, and then it turns yellow, and then it's red at the very top. Um, you want a lot of green. If you see a little bit of yellow, that's okay. You don't want too much, but a little bit is okay. Um, it's the red that you have to look out for. If you've hit red, your signal has clipped, and it's no good. You're gonna have distortion, it's gonna sound bad, um, and it's, it's not going to, it's not going to sound good, basically. It's going to be uh, distorted or clipped or peaked. Um, so if you ever see that red, 
you're going to turn that gain knob back down. Okay. And I always generally go for quieter rather than louder. You don't necessarily need to push it and get it into the yellow, but this, oh, it's, it might hit the red. No, I think we're okay. If you're doing that, just turn it down even more. Um, because of how clean all this modern equipment is, and it's got tons and tons of headroom, um, if it's a little bit too quiet, you can always fix that later. You can always turn it up, but if you've hit that peak, you've hit that red point where it lights up red, that can't be fixed at that point. You're, 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 kind, of, uh, you're kind of out of luck there. Um, so you want to make sure that that gain is low enough to where you will, you will get zero red anywhere in the whole time that you're playing the song, okay? And then you're ready to go. You'll hit record and, and you're off and running. And, you know, again, very, very simple. That's how we DI record bass. And I do it this way, even in my big high-end professional studio, because it's simple, because it's easy, because it's fast, it's fast. And there's a lot of other advantages to it um, besides just those things. For example, you don't need headphones when you're recording DI with a bass guitar. Um, you can just toss your headphones right out the window. Uh, not, not literally, we like headphones. But uh, because it's not a microphone, you don't need to be isolated, okay? You can just listen through your normal speakers. You know, I've got my studio monitors here. I can just listen through those and play along. And then when I listen back to just the bass guitar, there's no bleed, there's no signal coming in. Whereas if I were using a microphone, I would have to either be in another room or turn my speakers off and be listening only in headphones. Otherwise you would get that bleed where the microphone picks up what's coming over the speakers. And we don't want that, right? So that makes it all the much uh, all that much easier to get a good clean recording and just makes it even more flexible because you can't just listen on the speakers. You don't have to have headphones. You don't have to set up monitoring or anything like that. Um, bleed will never be a problem. So that's DI recording. That is, you know, how I recommend everybody does it. If you are a bass player and you own an amp that you absolutely love, you can certainly record through an amplifier. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. You just start to run into um, some other issues, you know, again, bass amps and because of like the physics of sound, a bass amp isn't necessarily going to sound even through a really high quality microphone and really well recorded. It's not necessarily going to sound exactly how it sounds to you in a room. Again, this just has to do with acoustic physics of bass frequencies. Um, but putting a microphone right up on a bass amp can sometimes do some funky things and, and change the tone a little bit. You can lose some low end, you can get some weird kind of phasing issues and stuff. Um, I generally avoid it usually. Um, there's a lot of guys out there who will take a DI signal and they'll go into this little box, right? And they'll record direct, but there's another extra plug on this little box that's actually an output. And what that's meant for is you plug your bass into here then you take your microphone plug and you send that directly to your interface and that's your DI signal. But it's, excuse me, it splits your signal internally and sends it back out this jack so you can connect it to an amplifier. And then you put a microphone in front of that amplifier and now you're able to record both at the same time. In really big high-end studios, they, they do this pretty often um, because it gives them the best of both worlds. They can use the DI signal or they can use the amped signal. Um, the only problem that you'll run into with that is that you can run into the signals being out of phase, okay? And um, basically without, again, getting too complicated, that just means that part of the sound is canceling itself out so it won't sound quite right. And you have to either flip the phase on your preamp or do some things in mixing to, to correct that as kind of a technical issue. But again, for guys who are just starting out out there, just doing it direct, the way that we have it set up here where it's just a cable into your interface and that's it. That is by far the simplest, the easiest. It's gonna sound great as long as you get that gain staging correctly. Um, we know on that little gain knob on your preamp, as long as you're not clipping or peaking or anything there, you're gonna be in really, really good shape and you're gonna get an excellent quality bass guitar recording. But what do you guys think? What do you guys do in order to get your best bass tones when you're recording? We would love to hear any other tips or trips, tips, tricks, thoughts, or comments in the comment section down below. We always appreciate hearing from you guys. Um, again, my name is Alex Scott with CollinsFordini.com. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you guys found it helpful, and we'll see you next time.